Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconer video. Today's video, I will be talking about rethinking buzzard hawking. Uh, before I jump into the topic, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. I very much appreciate it. It helps me to keep this channel going. Uh, the topic of buzzards is a fun one and one that I should address actually far more often. But uh, unfortunately, the word is misused, especially in the New World, especially in the United States. And it's probably because people in the United States, and I'll get into that in a minute. But when you hear the word buzzard in my area, most people just you're, talk to your average person and you say buzzard, people picture a vulture. This is 100% inaccurate. In fact, uh, I have often heard of turkey vultures called turkey buzzards, which they are not in any way, shape, or form. Now, old world and new world vultures are totally unrelated. Doesn't matter. Vultures on either side of the globe are not buzzards. So what on earth is a buzzard? Well, uh, as far as I can tell, the origins of the word are French, and it's from Bussard, probably pronouncing that wrong. And a buzzard is a group of raptors that I mean if you want if you want to see, if you if you hear the word buzzard what you should picture is a red-tailed hawk. I view the red-tailed hawk as the most quintessential buzzard there is. So what's the difference between a hawk and a buzzard? And if it's a red-tailed hawk, a buzzard, why are we calling it a red-tailed hawk? We should call it a red-tailed buzzard. That's what it is. When we use, hawk is, is very strange too because even the title of this video, buzzard hawking. Well, are you talking about hawks or buzzards? Hawking is a term that means going out and taking your bird of prey and hunting with it. I could take an owl hawking. I could take a falcon hawking, an eagle hawking, a hawk hawking, a buzzard hawking. So I understand it gets confusing. But the important thing you need to remember is that there's two main groups of birds that we call hawks and only one of them is a hawk. Uh, I don't mind if these are called hawks, but they're buzzards. So the two groups are, the first ones are the true hawks. These are the occipiters, forest hawks. Ga in the United States, we have the northern goshawk, and of course the very famous Cooper's hawk, the medium-sized raptor, often referred to as a feathered rattlesnake, and the smallest, the sharpshin hawk, which evolved from Eurasian sparrow hawks. All over the world, there are many types of occipiters. Occipiters are spirited, gamey, they're just, they're so intense with their abilities, with their vision, with everything. They are the amped up, and I'll get into that in a minute, they are super amped up, and they are they can hunt in any environment, but they're built for forests or forests with open meadows where they can d -d 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 dodge and fly in and out. The occipiters or the short wings, the true hawks, okay? Then you have the buzzards. Uh, if you're talking in taxonomy, the word is budio. So your budios, the common word is buzzard. And a, the buzzards, again, the red-tailed hawk, it is, in my opinion, the perfect a quintessential definition of what a buzzard is. A buzzard is, they're usually a very open country. They like to perch and just sit there in the open, not afraid, they're big, most of them are big. And they just wanna survey their domain and oh, dive down on something. What is that something? Usually that something is a rodent. Uh, but buzzards are generalists. So uh, there's there's many buzzards, I'm gonna get into them in, in more in a minute, but, but I wanna start this off, let's get this right. Let's take this name back. Buzzard is not derogatory, but you gotta understand, in the world of falconry, most regions of the world have some sort of historic falconry tradition where, oh, we live in this region, we hunt with this species. We live in that region, we always hunt with these taxons of raptors. And it worked because those, all those other old world regions came from a place of getting food. It was what is the most highly effective raptor for getting food, and then that evolved in tradition. So there might be other effective raptors you don't use because this best suits your area. And uh, as such, you compare a goss, the abilities of a goshawk to the abilities of a red-tailed hawk, there's no contest. Uh, so in some countries, they were viewed as, oh, uh, true hawks, like a goshawk, or a falcon, like a peregrine falcon, are more spirited hunters than buzzards are, they're lesser birds. 
they, they don't, they're not as fast, they're not as spirited, they're not as gamey, they're not as aggressive, and so why would anybody want one? That was the view throughout most of the world. Now, I, I, I understand that's even more extreme. I have never flown a common buzzard, but the common buzzard of Europe and Asia is a bird that I am told is reported to have an extremely slow metabolism and does not have to consume a lot of food. If you've flown one or worked one, please give us some more details down below. But a lot of the old world northern European buzzards I hear are even more, are even less spirited than some of our new world buzzards. But because of that, buzzard was kind of a falconry derogatory term almost. It was like, pfft. Who would fly a buzzard? And my understanding from my, as far as I can tell, uh, early European colonists coming to the New World were not falconers, but they carried that derogatory term with them. So any large slow bird might have been viewed in the New World as, as a buzzard. It might be a red-tailed hawk, you know, red-tailed buzzard. It might be a golden eagle. It might be a turkey vulture. These New World vultures that people were encountering for the first time, that's a buzzard. That one's got a red head, it's a turkey buzzard. And there was this derogatory view, but it is an inaccurate use of the word. I love using the term buzzard correctly, and it's a cool word, buzzard. It's cool sounding, but I, so I encourage all my apprentices and all falconers, hey, Let's use the word accurately and let's take it back and let's, I, you know, I don't, I still call it a red-tailed hawk, but I refer to a red-tailed hawk as a buzzard. I'm like, this is my red-tailed hawk. They're one of the most common buzzards in America, like that. It, it doesn't matter, you know, common names, who cares, but I love the term and it's accurate. So let's use buzzard for what it is. So knowing that we've kind of established what is a buzzard, it's a bootio, it's a soaring hawk. What is it not? A vulture. All right. So now that we're on the same page on that, and again, please, I encourage people to use the term buzzard right because let's take it back. But now let's talk about buzzard hawking. You have to understand, like I already mentioned, because a lot of these other countries around the world did not have a, it legitimately and understandably had no history or very little history of working with buzzards. Because, you know, in the old days, before grocery stores and McDonald's, you know, you're, you're talking about getting food. You know, why, why would you, you're going to get the best bird you can to bring home the bacon, to get dinner. And out in, the, in these older times was not a buzzard, especially not some of the old world buzzards. So, uh, but American falconry is recent. Now, I've talked on this channel a little bit about uh, potential there. We certainly in Mesoamerica have some accounts of raptors being, you know, apparently Aplomato falcons being kept by the Aztecs and Europeans shipping them back. Uh, I had somebody mention the other day uh, a, a, a small count of some of the northeastern tribes supposedly keeping some sort of small raptor to chase birds away from the crops. I would love to find out even more about those kind of things. But we don't have a long, rich, established, written, documented tradition of falconry in the New World. And so early 1900s falconers were just... Falconry is cool. We were reading about it in books. Uh, you know, people that you know that your early 1900s were uh, mostly mostly thinking about European falconry, especially medieval and Renaissance falconry. And there was sort of a romanticized idea in their head: a knight in shining armor. Armor. People were reading books of Robin Hood, and so there was this image of you know you have your bow, or you have your sword, or you have your crossbow, or your horse, and your your fine hunting bird. But the thing is, in the New World, we have a lot of comparable species to the old world and we have a lot that are not at all uh and so as such a lot of these early falconers were just trying everything i love looking through the old national geographic article of the craighead brothers when they were quite young and they pioneered a lot in you know a whole lot in falconry and uh, of course their sister uh jean craighead george wrote the book my side of the mountain which ended up inspiring so many new up-and-coming falconers including myself but i love looking through this article because seeing some of the birds they were trying out and they're reporting on it they're they're like oh look we got all these we got these and then they're finding out oh geez this ended up being a horrible species to work with or this was super hyper aggressive or this was uh, really a good bird and the these are all things that we know now about new world species you know century later or whatever but but uh it's interesting to see people pioneering falconry even in the 19 early 1900s and uh so but one of the things that we had no prejudices against true buzzards 
uh, not from a falconry sense. It's like, oh, and look at this Autobahn field guide, or uh, there's a red-tailed hawk. Uh, I don't know. I see them all over. What are they like? And so we in the in the United States and in the New World, not just the United States, but I'm referencing that because that's where I'm from. We just kind of started pioneering working with buzzers because we were too. We, we didn't we didn't have any reason not to. We didn't have an established tradition. We were living in a time where food was available. People had jobs instead of I'm a hunter gatherer. It's like I have my job and I'm going to go to a restaurant and go to the grocery store. So it wasn't about tradition and it wasn't about subsistence. And so we tried all kinds of birds that perhaps otherwise would not have been tried and we help to find out just how amazing buzzards truly can be as a legitimate hunting bird and now of course i mentioned the red-tailed hawk a lot because red-tailed hawks are are kind of standard fare and i'll, I'll get into them more in a minute uh i think the, if there's two birds out of the United States that are true buzzards that have been exported and bred and used outside of the United States, uh, I'm not talking about Harris's, but would be the red-tailed hawk and the frugenous hawk. Both of these are large, powerful, and for a buzzard are quite gamey, quite spirited, quite uh, eager to go hunt if they're trained properly. But the new world is filled with so many buzzards. Some of these have been worked with extensively. Some of them have been exported and used in small ways. Uh, some of them uh, are even up to the size of an eagle. Have you know, like the Chilean blue eagle? It's actually a budio. It's a buzzard that's eagle-sized. So some of these birds uh, have not really been explored at all. There is a whole world of uh, from tropical to Arctic type birds. Uh, one of my favorites that I have worked with, and I don't know anybody directly who has hunted with them besides me, is rough-legged hawks. I'll be doing a video later on in the season. We Our rough legs haven't really showed up yet, so I want to get some good footage. Uh, I might even fly one just to show it because I haven't hunted with one for years, for you know, we're a decade and a half, two decades since I have, but they're great birds if they're done properly. They're dismissed easily by people who haven't really worked with them, but if you train them properly, these birds have amazing abilities. A lot of these uh, buzzards are capable of hovering. The, the One of the, the hallmarks of buzzards is, even though most of them are rodent hunters primarily, that's because it's what's easiest to get a good meal out of, but most of them are generalists. Uh, I've hunted red-tailed hawks on canal ducks and things like that. You can train them to wait on. Uh, you can train them to soar hawk and do all kinds of crazy things. Hunt over a ridge. You can even train them to wait on just like a falcon if you do it right. And uh, I've t been tempted to show that with a drone. Drone training of a, of a buzzard would be really cool to show. There are uh, old world buzzards I know that have been worked with. Again, uh, uh, common buzzards of Europe are common fare used in bird shows for flight training and education. I don't know how much they have been used uh, for falconry. And again, I've heard that they're kind of on the lower end of abilities. Uh, but there's, there's other birds like uh, jackal buzzards from Africa and auger buzzards, uh, which uh, used to be classified as the same species as a jackal, but now they're separate. Both of those have, have most definitely been proven as, as fine hunting raptors. So there, there's, there's things being done all over the world. I'm not trying to say the United States is responsible for all buzzard hawking by any means, but I'm just saying we weren't going against any established tradition by trying them out. So that in mind, let's just talk about just a little bit of the abilities. Let's talk about this here. Um, it is true, the, the biases that I mentioned earlier, it is true that falcons and the true hawks, the occipiters, the forest hawks, they are more spirited. They are more capable. They are more high energy. But I wanted to try to take away part of the prejudice we have. In the United States, it used to be when we started, there's ranks. You're an apprentice, then a general class, then a master class. And as an apprentice, you could only have a red-tailed hawk or a kestrel to start with. And then you could work with other birds as you worked your way up the ranks. And that established an incorrect idea that a red-tailed hawk is just simply a beginner's bird. Now, there are parts of the United States where a red-tailed hawk is still, especially squirrel hawking states where, uh, you know, hardwood deciduous forests with, with tree squirrels provide the main hunting opportunities. Uh, I know a lot of people still prefer a uh, red-tailed hawk as a, as their, even when they're working to wear up the ranks. But still, there is kind of this attitude that, oh, pff, that's, that's, 
that's a booty oh, that's a buzzer. They're you know, but you know what the thing is, there's kind of different energy levels, and depending on what you are doing in your life, you remember the rule I always I always spout out, which is you will have the most success hunting a bird native your into your area. And using it to hunt prey native to your area, that is prey that that bird would also naturally be hunting in the wild. So, for example, Cooper's hawk is a great bird for my area. I have Cooper's hawks, I have quail, and Cooper's hawks naturally hunt quail. So, dun, 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 you're going to have tons of success. But you know what? Part of it sometimes is where is your life situation? And what is your stress level? To keep, you know, it used to be, you know, we started with our red tails and our kestrels and we worked our way up and it's like, now I need a peregrine or a jeer falcon or a goshawk. But you know what? Depending on where you're at in life, the energy level of the bird should be a factor for your well-being and your success and your happiness. If you think of a buzzard down here, a buzzard energy, not as far as like, I'm lethargic, but as far as the kind of emotional energy they exude and what it takes to keep them up and running. If you think of a buzzard as here, and then you think of a falcon as here, and then you think of an occipiter like a goshawk or a cooper's hawk as way up here, that's what you got to be. You, it is such intense and all-encompassing with an occipiter. A falcon, it's a little less stressful. And a buzzard, pro even properly flown, is the least amount of stress of those three of those three taxons. That can be a legitimate factor. Uh, just even traveling. So many of my occipiters that I've flown, they're hee, 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 while I'm traveling. You go around a corner, they turn around, and I go, and I'm worried. Are they are they are 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 they being stressed out? And, a, and most buzzards, you train them properly, and they're just like, okay, we're riding. But then when you go out into the field and actually hunt them, geez, they're incredible. They are not as capable as a goshawk, but they're, you push them, you train them correctly, and reward them properly so they see the value. Once they're turned on, they are unstoppable with whatever you are hunting. And maybe it's okay. You know, maybe sometimes at certain stages in your life, the ups and downs of life, you do, you're still practicing falconry. Maybe sometimes you want a race car. Maybe sometimes you want a commuter car. Or maybe that commuter car, it's like, geez, uh, I can still go 120 miles an hour, but you're not usually going that fast, are you? It's just like, hey, this is a fast, agile, reliable, good commuter car. And maybe that's, maybe that's the buzzard. There's nothing wrong with that. And they're still spectacular to watch. If falcons and occipiters did not exist and we still had falconry, we'd be espousing just how fast and how aggressive and agile these buzzards are. But because we're comparing them to something else, it's like, pfft. it's like, no, take back the, pfft. take it back. They're great birds. They're amazing birds. And again, there are people who that is all they hunt with. No matter how long they've been doing it, how they work their way up the ranks, they're like, hey, my buzzard's reliable, solid, uh, highly effective game hawk, and I love hunting with it. Why do I need to switch to something else? So I wanted to share that as a principle to say, hey, what is a buzzard really? And hey, let's take back the word buzzard and start using it more in our circles and see if we can push back on all these old ideas that a buzzard means a vulture and last you know hey remember that a buzzard is not necessarily a beginner's bird it might be fairly easy to train but that doesn't mean it's a simple bird that should be dismissed they're highly capable and some of my favorite birds to fly so i hope you enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts and comments let me know your experiences working with buzzards and uh, hopefully i'll have some good buzzard content with probably red tails and rough legged hawks later on this season i'll still have some more trapping videos coming up again some of the trapping videos where they're more how to take more editing time and more time even doing drawings to show parts of the processes for comparison so they are still in the works uh be watching for those thank you for your support of this channel and as always happy hawking